What do you have to share with me, Mistios? Makarios is well placed at the Agogi. The trainer, Iatrocles, will be a hard taskmaster, but he will grow strong and brave. God's willing, he'll find a way to endure and thrive. It is not easy to send one's heart into the world. He's eager and bright, and he has the Oros there to guide and inspire him. They will support each other. You demonstrate the wisdom of Athena, Eagle Bearer. You are a blessing to this family. There are several in the region who could benefit from your presence, Eagle Bearer. Help them, inspire them, and I'll reward you. Give me their names. The farm owner, Laniki, as well as several of the town's important women, Zita, Vamia, and Zefxo. Who is this farm owner? Laniki runs the farm for her family. Recently, it has been underperforming. She blames the gods and believes the land is cursed. But I wonder if she's too quick to punish her Ilotes. What does it need? Her daughter, Zotheras, is as wild and headstrong as an untamed filly. Zita constantly prays for guidance, but I suspect Zotheras needs a more grounded hand to direct her. What should I know about Tamia? She has two precocious children who rule the roost in the Agora. They reduce their tutors to tears and stir up the other age mates. She is hoping you can instill some respect in them. What can you tell me about Zefxo? Her husband is off training for war, and she specifically requested an audience with you for help with something quite personal. I'll find them and see what they want of me. May the Dioscuri watch over your path. Oh, Ira and Aphrodite. Please grant my daughter the virtue of obedience. Eagle Bearer, you bless this temple with your presence. If I may ask, I'm having a little problem. I'm not a problem. I'm a Spartan. You keep at home supervising farmers while I could be out in the world finding adventure. You give my brothers the chance to explore. Why not me? An explorer, are you? So, you're the Eagle Bearer everyone's been talking about. I hope you live up to your reputation. I'm Zoferas. Could you please educate my daughter to behave as a Spartan woman should? If both you and Zoferas agree, I'll train your daughter to be a fine Spartan. Beginning with her physical strength, of course. It's the only way she can keep your household safe and prosperous. The Eagle Bearer is right, Mater. Spartan women must be strong. You can call me Cassandra. I suppose if the Eagle Bearer says it. All right. Train my daughter as you see fit. Let's begin your training with running. Try to keep up. But Spartans never run. Only cowards do. Why should I train in running? Strong legs mean you'll thrust your spear with more force. And yours do seem very strong. Let's race through the theater to the entrance of the Dromos. Last one there's a wounded goat. you could make it. I'll get you next time. Now we'll race horses. But not like they do in athletic games. We'll make our own course. Horses? Why should I bother with those filthy beasts? We have Ilotes for that. Horses are beasts of muscle and power. 
You'll never understand until you hold one between your thighs. Well, when you put it that way, ride on. Let's race to the bridge south of Sparta. Ready? Go! Come on! How you master a beast. That was more speed than mastery. How are my lessons so far, Zophorus? Not bad. But why did you decide to teach me anyway? Don't you have more exciting things to do? Treasures to find, tyrants to depose. If no one taught, people would live alone in their ignorance. By sharing knowledge, we grow closer together. I might like to get closer. Do you have a suggestion for our next bit of training? There's a place I found in the southern hills with a wonderful view. Will you go there with me? I like the view already, but let's go. So, does that bird follow you everywhere? Icarus? Yes, he likes to keep an eye on me. Are you jealous? <laughs> if you don't mind being watched, I don't either. Did Zeus give you any special powers? You know. Achilles got invulnerability, and at least the strength of a god. If you know the old stories, you know what Zeus is especially good at. If you have that kind of talent, just yeah. call me Pandora. Beautiful, isn't it? Absolutely. I think I'm beginning to understand you, Cassandra. Are you? Tell me, who do you think I am? You answer my questions with such passion and authority. You like being in charge, don't you? You might be right. But really, why did you bring me out here? I thought we could continue with some more intensive training, Cassandra. If you've got some energy left. Well then, let's begin our advanced lessons. Thanks, Cassandra. You inspired me to train harder. Magistrate Xanthi told me that you've been having trouble with your farm. Crop failure. It's as if Ares herself salted the earth. How are the crops failing? Blight. Few plants grow, and the ones that do are wilted and covered in spots. The gods would never let this happen if they were happy. It's my godless Elotes, I tell you. You're a messenger of Zeus. You show them the light. I'll find out what's happening. Oh, thank Zeus. My Elotes, Tefta and Maron. They work the fields, but they do not respect the gods. Teach them. 
I haven't seen other farms in the area with blighted crops. What could be causing the difference? The grain grew in short and dry. Then the animals started to grow ill. Obvious signs of displeasing Persephone or her mother. Maron claims the animals have been poisoned, but I have no enemies to speak of. What makes you blame your Ilotes for the blight? Have they tampered with the plants and animals? They do not worship as you and I do. I thank Dimitir for all she gives us at the end of each day. But they just reap the bounty of her hard work. So... it's divine intervention? What else dictates our fates? Oh, Defta won't stop babbling about the soil. Thinks I overwork my farm. Idiot woman. As if this farm hasn't been in my family for generations. I'll go talk with your Ilotes and see what they know. Mistios. Here. Your master claims this blight is the will of the gods. What do you think? Sometimes crops fail. Could be dry soil, could be insects. It's a shame about the donkey. He was more crucial to the farm's success than the master. Or you, for that matter. How can I make clearing the ground easier? The hoe I'm using is falling apart. I have to fix the blade every few swings. Something more sturdy would make it go faster. It's not like you're shackled to this patch of land. What's preventing you from getting a new hoe? Have you ever been beaten so hard you lose hearing in one of your ears? That's what happened last time I went to market without permission. Oh, of course. I'll look for one. Here you go. This should make digging easier. You're all right for a stranger. Look, the water's tasted like a rusty blade for the past few weeks. Last time I had water like that was when I was downriver from a blacksmith. Thank you. Journey across the sticks be a more peaceful end than this. Debris might be getting stuck in this net. Maybe the dead man was a fisherman. Huh. These don't look like the knife wounds of a man. I'll bet it's the metal from the armor giving the water a bad taste. Smell is going to linger on me. At least the river runs clear now. Yeah. I 
heard that the crops haven't been producing this season. Laniki expects more crops every year. The soil needs to rest. So there could be nothing else causing crop shortage? I didn't say that. You know more than you're saying. My stomach aches and it's hard to concentrate. It's a shame that there is no mint around to chew. Where would I get mint? The master keeps dried herbs up at the house. You can't get mint for yourself because... The master keeps all the medicine. I can pick and dry the herbs, but I'm not allowed any for myself. I'll go find some mint for you. Here you go. The herbs you needed. Fresh is better for my stomach, but since the blight... Dried is all we have left. The back patch of land is riddled with blight like I've only seen once before. My old master lost his whole farm to it. I'll never forget this smell. The back of the farm? I'll take a look. I wonder anything grows in this field with all this mess crushing the plants. The earth is stained here. That can't be good for the soil. Tanners in Kefalonia use something that smells awful to make leather. It can't be good for the soil. It seems like fire is the only way to make sure of ending this blight. everything up around here. Now I'm beginning to understand Tefta's anger. The diseased crops have been burned, and the river is cleared. That should be the last of the blight. Oh, you truly are God sent. What was the cause of the rot? You were so busy looking to the sky that you ignored what was in front of you. The gods are not responsible for cleaning the fields or the river. That's on you. What? You dare? Xanthi said you are an agent of Zeus, but you are a false champion as godless as my Ilotes. Get out from here. The poison in your fields is nothing compared to the poison in your heart. wouldn't happen to be the eagle bearer, would you? Me? Yes, I am. Where do you know justice? Your hair must have been woven by Athena. Your body is like a sculpture made by the masters. And your arms look so strong. Strong enough to... Strong enough to... Strong enough to carry this basket to my husband, Kalibos. Oh, right. The magistrate mentioned you. It'll be easy to carry. Thank you so much. Let me know if you need anything. What's in the basket? What any man would need on the eve of battle to win the respect of the gods. Please, Eagle Bearer. It would give him an edge over his enemies. Where might I find Calibos? He's an important general. His unit is stationed in the northeast near the fort of Presai, down by the beach. I'll help with your delivery. Oh, 
heavy. What's in here? Bricks? Mistios? Well met. What brings you to our camp? You are Calibos? Your wife sent me to deliver this package. I think it might be some kind of offering. Zefxo is a good woman. She's gifted me with a basket fit for Dionysos. Earthly pleasures? She made it sound like it was a case of life and death. A deathly hangover, maybe. Boys, we're having a good night. Care to join us, friend? Are you sure you want your soldiers this intoxicated while in the field? Oh, I must have misjudged you. Are you not also a Spartan? The only thing we are better at than fighting is drinking. I see your point. Thank you for offering. I don't like to dull my senses this close to battle. I will stay and keep you and your men company through the night. Chaperoned by a messenger of Zeus? This will be interesting. Could someone pass the water skin? Oh, could someone pass my head? I think I left it farther down the beach. I didn't even drink last night. Why am I seeing a Trojan horse? We can offer it to Poseidon Earthshaker for safe passage across the sea. Careful! This was a trap the last time. boasted to a friend that I was a better tactician than Odysseus himself. Today I was proven wrong. You live to fight another day. Learn from this. Please, thank my wife for her festive gift. I don't know if I should thank her or curse her. Wonderful! Magistrate Xanthi has spoken highly of you. Very kind of her. So here's the thing. My children have promising futures, but they refuse to learn and study. They think they know better, but they can't recite a poem to save their lives. Where do I fit into this? They've heard of the Eagle Bearer and worship the ground you walk on. If you related an epic story to them, I'd bet they retain it and impress their tutors. It's an odd request, but uh, I've been asked to do stranger things. I'll do it. My children are waiting inside the temple of the Onisus Colonatas for today's epic story. The subject is Perseus, which they should know well, but seem to forget all one question. Perseus? I know his story well, as if we were cousins, both raised at the base of Mount Olibos. Do not fear. I will hold your children fast with my tail. Hello! 
all. I'm... The Eagle Banner. We've heard all about you. Are you going to tell us a story today? Do we have to listen? We've heard it a hundred times. Yes, that's me. And yes, I'm telling you a story. Let us sing with the voice of the goddess about the exploits of brave Perseus and the noble Pegasus. Acrisius, the king of Argos, was not a good man. He had one child, a daughter, Danai. Bitter that he had no son, he went to the oracle of Delphi and heard a prophecy that chilled him. Ooh, what was it? The oracle said Acrisius would be killed by his grandson. But Danai was unmarried and childless at the time. To protect himself, he locked Danai in a bronze room open only to the sky. Ooh! However, mighty Zeus saw the girl and fell in love with her. He transformed into a golden shower and seduced her. Danai gave birth to a son, Perseus. I knew it! King Acrisius couldn't kill the boy for fear of angering Zeus, so he put his daughter and grandson in a wooden crate and tossed them into the wild sea to be drowned. How horrid! Poor Perseus! Perseus and his mother Danai were rescued on the island of Seriphos, and Perseus grew up under the care of a kindly fisherman, Thictis. Lucky them! Did the gods help? Maybe. Perseus learned to swim and ride and fight, and how to be good and just, even though his father was only a fisherman. I can do all those things too! Good for you. Except swim or be just. Hush! Now, Victis' brother was the ruler of the island, but he was not a good man. He's scum! The cruel king of Seriphos, Victis' brother, Polyvectis, decided he wanted to marry Danai, for she was still beautiful and noble. But Perseus knows his mother does not want this. Victis couldn't stop his brother, so it was up to Perseus to interfere and be annoying. Christos, <laughs> that's your job. I will keep this stinky king from marrying you. The cruel, uh, stinky king became angry. To get rid of Perseus, Polyvectis sent him on an impossible quest. Prove yourself a warrior and fetch me a worthy wedding gift, the king said, by killing a great monster. I knew it! Shh, I knew it too. Polyvectis told Perseus to bring back the head of Medusa, the gorgon whose gaze could turn anyone who looked into her eyes to stone. Ah! Polyvectis knew that Medusa would be Perseus' death. That stinker! But the evil king did not know Perseus was favored by the gods. Hermes gifted Perseus with winged sandals and a silver sickle, and Athena gave him a bronze shield, polished, mirror bright. Perseus flew to Medusa's lair and used the shield to watch her reflection. He cut off her head with the sickle of Hermes. As she died, the winged foal Pegasus sprang from her neck. Yes! Flying home, Perseus found the maiden Andromeda chained on the Ethiopian cliffs, waiting to be sacrificed to the baleful sea monster Ketos. Perseus used Medusa's head to turn Ketos to stone, rescued Andromeda, and married her. Take that, Ketos! Perseus returned home to find King Polyvectis relentlessly pursuing the Nai. They quarreled, and Perseus showed the king his wedding gift. When he saw Medusa's head, Polyvectis turned to stone. Perseus traveled to Argos with his family, and one day competed in the Great Athletic Games. He hurled the discus, and his throw was so great that it shot into the stands and struck King Acrisius. So doing, Perseus killed his grandfather and fulfilled the prophecy. Hurrah! You can't escape your fate. In the end, Perseus and Andromeda settled in Mykine as king and queen, and had seven sons and two daughters, the Persine. 
That was a great telling of the tale. I'll never forget it. Maybe the best. I can't wait to tell all my friends. Oh, thank you. I couldn't help overhearing the end of your story. Truly inspiring, Eagle Bearer. Thank you. Thank you for aiding all of us in Pitana. Stories of you will live amongst us for many years. I help where I can, but thank you. A reward for all your help. 